and I say very good morning and a happy Monday as we continue a very busy week across the continent. And this time around, at about uh, just a few minutes past 11, we'll be giving you all the latest updates from across Nigeria, but most important, from Abuja, where a trial is currently ongoing, and we'll be taking you as well to Kutono in Benin Republic, where we also have one of the most important cases that is also going on as we speak right now. But for now, uh, let's come back again to you in the studio. It is Star Radio UK, your finest African and Caribbean radio station in London. Remember to follow us on all our social media and those we are reporting on Twitter, on YouTube. But the best way is download the Star Radio UK apps where you can follow all the latest updates and news from across the continent. Yes. How are you and how was your weekend? Well, uh, uh, it's a very busy weekend. Uh, it was a very quick one uh, with so many activities being prepared for today. Uh, so much information to pass around to different, uh, you know, individuals. But uh, again, uh, another opportunity, uh, you know, to spend with the, you know, with the family as well. And also, uh, you know, communication as the job that we do as a journalist. Uh, you just have to keep talking. And even if you don't want to talk, people want to know what is going on. And that is what we do on Star Radio UK. Yes, exactly. That's what we do. But let me acknowledge a couple of people and then uh, Mr. Lai Nukoyki will start having the discussions of what is happening in Nigeria. Prophetic Rus uh, Rufus uh, A.O., good morning to you. Tell me more. We're going to be telling you more. Uh, okay. Oh, let me see. Apollo Yen uh, as a victory in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, we always look forward for that victory and we hope that victory will be seen in all aspects of our lives today okay but now let's go to mr olaya miko again now interestingly today is a massive 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 day when it comes to uh nigeria and uh and benin and when it comes to the ipop and it comes to the yoruba uh nation as well or those who are um, agitating for yoruba nation due to what is happening in the country now can you just give us a breather of what is happening in the federal capital at the moment because I thought military were there in Rambo style. Uh, well, uh, 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 I, I know I, I thought I called them ninjas um, coming up and all that stuff that is going on. I see maybe there is a terrorist uh, that they are trying to apprehend. But can you give us a breather of what is going on in Abuja at the moment? It's, a tea, it's eight minutes past and uh, I can confirm that yes, uh, the trial of the uh, of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, also known as IPOP, uh, Mazi Inam de Kano, is currently going on as we speak right now at the Federal High Court in Abuja with heavy security, as you can tell, but also with so many interested individuals from around the world that would like to know what has actually happened we do not know what is happening right now because uh, i can confirm that you know as you know nigeria uh, has its own ways of doing things and only 10 media were accredited you know to give us the development of what is happening at the federal high court in abuja as i speak right now so until the court comes to an halt when the lawyers the legal representatives of imagine and the kanu will be speaking to us the media the, the public that is when we will find out a little bit more but i can confirm to you i did watch the you know the video of the uh of one of the legal representative after having a opportunity to interview uh in Amdekano at the dss headquarters in abuja that is how we knew some of what took place he was arrested at the underground car park according to the legal representative somewhere in kenya uh and it was you know uh giving a kind of an allegation as somebody of interest with the al Shaba in Kenya. We know what al Shaba is. al Shaba is a similar terrorist organization operating in Kenya as equivalent to what we know in Nigeria as the Boko Haram. So what we can confirm at the moment is there is heavy security in Abuja. Uh, the charges on him is treason, uh, and, uh, but he's proving that uh, you know even though uh, he was uh, unavailable for some time, there were so many reasons for that. So this is one of a legal test case for the Nigerian government versus Mazi Inamdekano that the whole world is also following. I'm going to come back again to you in the studio. This is again Star Radio UK, your finest African and Caribbean radio station in London.
getting bids from Nigeria as we are still on. So let's see whether we have him back now. Yeah, I think so. I think we have him back now. Yes, Yomi. Yes, uh, yes, we had a bit of a uh, you know breaking transmission there with the network, but I can still confirm that uh, you know there is uh, the cost case is going on in Abuja, but uh, uh, I was watching uh, you know the you know the feed coming out from some of the media that was not allowed. Uh, into the court premises and I was able to see you know somebody of interest that a lot of us knows very well Omoye Leshowere was also present and he said while he was trying to make his way into the court uh, he wasn't allowed with a machine gun that was pointed at him that shows that uh, you know the security present in and around you know the premises is quite tight this morning but I can also confirm that quite a lot of uh, you know supporters of Mazin and the Kanu are already in Abuja as we speak right now. I saw the road leading to the airport was quite a bit of gridlock. I'm not sure whether that is how it is every day in the morning or it is just because of the current court case that is of interest to millions of people around the world. Now, interestingly, let's go to the arrest of Namdi uh, Namdi Kanu, and then we can uh, continue with the discussions now. If he was arrested in Kenya and uh, allegedly saying that he was part of the, the Kenya jihadist, um, this thing. Now, why wasn't he tried in Kenya for them to say that, well, we think that you were there, uh, I mean, were inciting or whatever, and therefore they try him there. And then, uh, that's what happens here. If, if you are uh, arrested for terrorism, so you'll be tried here, and then you might be even in prison here. Now, after you serve your sentence, then they will now deport you to your, your country of origin. That's how it works. But why didn't they do that if that is what took place? And that means that how did they fly him from Nigeria, uh, not from Kenya to Nigeria? Well, I mean, these are part of what is going to be unraveled, you know, when these court proceedings start, uh, it will face a lot of uh, different, uh, you know, legal perspective. You know, you ask the question, I mean, eight good days, you know, according to the legal representative, Inam was, uh, you know, was locked up somewhere, you know, uh, chained down uh, somewhere in Kenya. And the question you've asked is, you know, you know, why is it that, you know, he was not, uh, you know, having this court proceeding in Kenya? These again indicate that, you know, you know, the Nigerian government have done what they call, you know, uh, not just, you know, kidnapping Inam Dekanu from Kenya. They have not gone through what they would have called the normal legal proceeding to have extradited him back into Nigeria for whatever offense that he must have committed. What they've done is what, according to the legal representative, is what we call, you know, uh, you know, a kind of a kidnap saga. This is not allowed in 21st century. This is not allowed from the international perspective. But all this will be unraveled when the court proceeding starts today. How long is going to last? We will have to wait and see. But like I said, somebody somewhere, uh, you know, would have to also face some kind of consequences for not going through the normal procedure, whether in Kenya, you know, the Kenya authorities have denied some of these allegations. But, you know, you know, with the with what is going on, I'm sure, uh, you know, this also will mean quite a lot of, uh, you know, legal terms, especially what will be now a kind of a relationship between Kenya, you know, uh, and the rest of the world when it comes to, you know, what took place between Nigeria versus Mazin and the Kanu. And this was almost, uh, you know, what we were, uh, you know, we've been discussing. But like I said, uh, quite a lot to be looked into as the case continue in Abuja as we speak right now. This is Star Radio UK. Yes, Star Radio UK, your favorite African and Caribbean radio station in London. Mr. Lai Nikoi, can bring you up just from Nigeria. Now, there's one interesting question that I want to ask. And uh, Olavisi is also asking the same thing. And Olavisi is saying that... Uh, so surprised that Britain is not doing much about Kano. Now, the question I was going to ask was that, is there a British I mean, government representation that's from the High Commission or anything in the court? Again, uh, you know, uh, you know for, uh, and again, these are part of what the, you know, the legal representative are saying. You know, he wasn't given that opportunity windows, you know, to have contacted, you know, the, you know, the British High Commission in Abuja, you know, to have given him a consular support. Not literally intervene in the court case, you know, uh, as, uh, as it could be, but not allowing him to have access to that. It's something that, again, you know, a lot of uh, legal representatives are asking. I mean, if Kano was, uh, was holding a British passport, let's look at it from this perspective. If Kano was a white man, you know, picked up somewhere around the world and, uh, you know, locked up uh, without any legal representatives, you know, whether a kind of a consular support from the High Commission in wherever it has happened, 
what could have happened? Again, I could confirm that, you know, there has been a legal representative also representing Mazin Amdekano back in the United Kingdom. And all these will face quite a lot of, I mean, you know, you know, to our listeners, this is something that for a very long time, we would have to continue to review it. I mean, we are talking now about three countries locked in together. Mazin Amdekano is a British, uh, you know, you know, passport holder from what we heard. It was picked up or it was kidnapped rather in Kenya. This is another country. Nigeria is involved. Now, the Nigerian government have refused necessary legal requirement for Inan Dekano until the legal representative that he had in Nigeria has taken over and they're giving us some of those information that we never knew of. If Kano was kidnapped from Kenya without the necessary documentation, what then is the consequence of this according to the international law? All these, like I said, is a new game changer for those that are studying law around the world. Mm -hmm. Well, we see international law, how it will all play out there. Uh, but somebody say the Belarusians did that. Well, uh, the, the president decided, no, that plane, uh, I think they have a terrorist <laughs> activity up, land the plane, took some people home. Yeah, that's what he wanted to do. We don't know how it's going to play out, but we're watching very, very closely. Now, uh, one last question that I wanted to ask was pertaining to those who, um, the journalists who were allowed in or the press houses that were allowed in, why are they, why are they restricting uh, press houses or, I mean, they just reduce the number to what? What do they have? Uh, well, well, I mean, you're quite, I mean, you shouldn't be surprised, you know, Mr. Ache. We're talking about Nigeria here. Yeah, this is a country that is lawless. This is a country that disrespects human rights. You know, this is a country that have not given freedom of press, freedom of conversation. Twitter was banned, you know. And you, you, you kind of ask the question, I mean, you know, what is the benefit of a, of a citizen that does not have the right or say? We're talking about 12 innocent, uh, you know, individuals that was picked up at the middle of the night from the late, uh, from the chief Sunday Igbo's house and two people were killed. The bodies were taken away. We are talking about 26 days. They have not been given a legal representative until we had to go to the court to file a motion. And those motion has now given the DSS the next 72 hours. I guess which they'll have to bring them and produce them to the court. So you ask the question. I mean, uh, we, we, we will say that out of the 10, I've looked at the 10 that was given opportunity, you know, to, you know, to cover the court case in Abuja. And it just shows that these again, uh, you know, are different, you know, mainstream media in Nigeria. Uh, we won't mention their names, but it again shows that somebody like Lai Mohammed, which is the information minister, is so scared. I mean, you know, he's scared of, you know, what could come out of the court case, but they know that those that have given the opportunity would have to abide by the NBC rules. And that is why, you know, they've literally gagged again media from reporting court proceeding in Abuja, just like they've banned media from reporting any terrorist, you know, incident occur in Nigeria. Well, it is that really UK. Now, do you know if there's going to be there's any protest going on in London at the moment? Because we know the president is leaving. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that was a breaking news. I was just coming, you know, just about okay. some few hours. And I'm sure okay. Londoners will be preparing, you know, for the welcome, you know, whether official or unofficial of the president, Mohammed Buhari, to London, that he will be leaving Abuja today, according to Femi additional, you know, the spokesman. What do we know about that? Let me quickly give us, you know, what we know. Uh, and like I said, this was only posted just about an hour ago. What I can confirm is President Muhammadu Buhari, the president of Federal Republic of Nigeria, will attend a global education summit in London. The president Buhari would today, Monday, the 26th of July, 2021, travel to United Kingdom to participate in what we call the Global Education Summit on Financing Global Partnership for Education 2021. It's going to be co-hosted by the Prime Minister Boris Johnson uh, uh, in UK. Also, we have the, you know, the President of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, will be there as well. And together with different head of state and government as well. If you remember, uh, and these are also some of the information after Inam Dekano was kidnapped, that the President must have got an int and he pulled out from that, you know, you know, you know, travel that was meant to be in London. Yeah, yeah, but he's not just yeah. coming alone for this global education summit. He also going to be as usual. You know, this is a president that he was coming in in 2014, you know, says that there will not be any medical tourism. But he has been in London 
most of the time, you know, to have a quality uh, health care, but why millions of Nigerians are dying on a daily basis for poor quality infrastructure of health care back home in Nigeria. And according to the press statement, like I said, he's not just coming for that alone. Uh, it would also be here till the second week of August for one reason, as usual, after the summit, the president will spend a few days for an earlier scheduled medical checkup is due back by the second week of August. Interesting. I mean, he has to get the, the best of health care because uh, he is the most important person in Nigeria. I mean, most important, everybody doesn't matter. Well, if you are listening to us, what is your take on all that? But while developments are going on, I'm going to take you straight to Kutonu, uh, uh, yeah, in Benin, where there's another issue going on. You know what? Yes, the court is in session uh, for the hearing of uh, uh, Chief Sunday Igbo, uh, whether they want to um, re repatriate him to Nigeria or not. Can you give us a breather on that one as well? Yes, now let's take you back now. Once again, this is Star Radio UK. As we speak right now, you know, we've been getting feedback from, uh, you know, from Benin Republic, especially, you know, with the court case that is also taking place as well, you know, with, uh, you know, the freedom fighter, you know, the philanthropist, the businessman, you know, the man that is loved by his people for speaking out because he believes that you know the you know the killer eight men the Fulani terrorists you know have not just done damage control to the southwest of the country the federal government of Buhari has refused to do the right thing his house was attacked at the middle of the night on the first of July I'm just taking us back to some of the reason why we are at the court today in Kutono his house was attacked you know with the intention of an assassination attempt on his life on the 1st of July 2021. He was able to escape that, but two of his aides were killed. The bodies were taken away up to now. The federal government of Nigeria and the DSS in their own way have not refused those two dead bodies. Likewise, 12 individuals were taken away from the house and we have not been able to get a legal representative to have a what we call interaction with them for the last 26 days until a motion was put forward. But on the day of the event, just about midnight, just before 11 p.m., the DSS spokesman came out and came out with allegation that, you know, Chief Sunday Bowo had stockpiled, according to them, of weapons in his house, the display weapon that has been debunked, that he has nothing to do with that you know, weapon. They offered the, you know, you know, brought out his, uh, his traditional outfit. You know, it's just like somebody like me with my Quran, you know, and the, the DSS have to produce the Quran, you know, while they were giving out their information to the members of the public. And likewise, a Christian would not have allowed, you know, that to happen. But the DSS also brought out his traditional outfit as well. Not just that alone, this also means that the DSS put out a wanted warrant on Chief Sunday Igbowo, and like we all know, this time last week, Monday, news broke out that it was uh, stopped because of the, in, uh, and this came out from the legal representative that spoke to the public on, sun, on Saturday that gave us a better understanding of why Chief Sunday Bo was arrested. There were quite a lot of fake rumors, there was propaganda, and this propaganda from information we gathered was coming out from the federal government to put it that Chief Sunday Bo had a Benelist passport. That was why it was stopped. But what we find out later, according to the legal representative representing him in Kutonu, where the court case is presently going on as we speak right now, is that he was not arrested, for having a fake Benelis passport, he was arrested because the federal government of Nigeria has put out an information sent to Benin Republic as an ECOWAS country to stop him wherever and whenever he was found. And he was stopped and the wife, you know, was released on Thursday. But the court case, like you say, is ongoing right now. There's a lot of representative there. But what we can say is we would also be feeding us back, you know, between today and tomorrow, whatever the outcome. You did ask a question whether, you know, the federal government will have interest of bringing him back. But this time around, they can't kidnap him just like they did with Mazin Abdekano in Kenya. Because, you know, we have what we call the legal representative that swoop into action as quickly as possible. And we can also confirm there is no extradictory between Benin Republic and Nigeria as we speak right now. So, yes, the federal government might produce their evidence against Chief Sunday Bowo, but all that 
will be fight by his legal representative right inside Kutono and not in Nigeria. I come back again to you in the studio. This is still Star Radio UK. Your finest African and Caribbean radio station in London is exactly 25 minutes past 11 as I come back again to you in the studio in London. Well, listen, as if there is no extraditary treaty between Nigeria and Benin, then how will the government, the federal government, try to get Sunday Ibo? Who the lawyers or legal representation of Sunday Ibo fight? And who the federal uh, government uh, lawyers also fight? How nasty is that fight going to be? Well, will ECOWAS step in? What is it going to be? I don't they all go for that, their meetings, they all go drink tea together, they know each other, all those old people, and they're doing their own stuff. So what is going to happen? But we hope, and keep fingers crossed, that justice will prevail. Okay then, it is Star Radio UK, 11.26 the time, uh, update from Nigeria with Mr. Olai Nikoiki. So now let's go to Yomi for some of the other stories making the rounds. Over to you, Yomi. Yes, once again, this is Star Radio UK. Let's quickly touch on some of the other news happening as well in Nigeria. Yesterday we saw the video of some of the children, not every one of them. Remember three weeks ago today, uh, at the uh, at the school, is you know a primary school precisely in Kaduna, children were taken away, you know, by the bandit, and they were also demanding food, uh, you know, support for some of these children. We can confirm that some of them have been released, you know, just yesterday, uh, you know, for the parents that have been, you know, waiting willingly, you know, to you know to have their children back. I mean, you can imagine the kind of traumatized that these children must have gone through in the hands of some of these bandits, wherever they were kept, whether in the bush, whether in the forest. And these are part of what a lot of Nigerians are asking. I, I heard you speaking before I came on air that, you know, the aircraft, the military aircraft that was taken down by the Boko Haram, I can confirm that you're looking about a million dollar aircraft that was brought down. That means, you know, if the, you know, the bandit or the terrorist have what we call, you know, the necessary equipment to bring down a kind of a, you know, a military aircraft, you know, which cost about a million dollars, then we should be concerned that they might also have the capability to take down a passenger aircraft as well. Let's look at some of the other airlines as well that is trending as well in Nigeria this morning. Quite a lot focus is about, you know, the Mazin and the Kano court case that is going on in Abuja and likewise, you know, the one that is going on in Kutono as well, you know, for Cheap Sunday at the EMO, popularly known as Igbo Wosha. Likewise, you know, there's quite a lot in terms of, uh, you know, the video I watch, uh, you know, as well, where the governor, uh, one of the governor in the northern part of the country is saying the similar thing to what, you know, the former deputy governor of Central Bank, Malafi, have told us when he was asked, who are the sponsor? Who is behind, you know, the, you know, the insurgency in Nigeria, you know, in the last couple of months and years? And he was also, you know, in the, in the belief that if the government doesn't know about it, then somebody must know about it. And he also said, you know, in terms of those, you know, that have been run and chased after, you know, you know, asking for a kind of, uh, you know, a separation out of Nigeria and not the main problem of Nigeria. The main problem is the terrorist organization as well. And likewise as well, you know, quite a lot of other news as well in Nigeria. Uh, we continue to monitor, you know, those news as well. But what I can also confirm is, you know, the, you know, the poverty level in Nigeria is not only biting on so many Nigerians. We had the local government election in Lagos over the weekend. Uh, Mr. Archie, we might have to play that video maybe tomorrow. You could see an elderly woman captured on a video, thumb printing as many multiple times on a ballot paper that she was given. I'm sure she probably got maybe about 500 Naira or 5,000 Naira. This shows that, you know, and I was watching one of our media colleagues yesterday do you also know that the representative for that particular constituency vote against an electronic voting system in the Senate in Abuja? And that shows you that, uh, you know, if the government was really serious about that, you know, they could have looked into that. But the, the poverty level in Nigeria is giving a lot of concern to so many people. The insecurity is giving a lot of concern to so many people. But like the president will be in the uh, you know, UK, for what we call uh, an education, you know, reform or education support. Millions of Nigerians today do not have the good quality education, uh, as you might expect, and that is because funding is not available as well. Uh, but for now, let's come back again to you in the studio. This is still Star Radio UK, your finest African and Caribbean radio station in London. 
Yes, listen, as Mr. Lai Mikoi keep bringing you up this from Nigeria. Let me say good morning to Anthony Aderi G. Uh, thank you very much. Continue to share the broadcast with your friends and loved ones. If you have any comments, as others have done, yeah, post it on our page as well. But you can text or WhatsApp it to us as well. The number is 075 uh, 0753966144. And I promise you, I'll definitely read that out. Okay, so. Now, we're we'll going to some of the other stories, but let me see, I'll say, okay, confirming the, the news that Mr. Lai Nikoi, he spoke about. But first of all, he said people have been protesting uh, already here. Oh, yes, uh, you're quite right. Uh, you know, since the 1st of July, uh, people have been on a daily basis, you know, been in central London. You know, we had an every one as well over the weekend. But I'm sure now that people know that the president will be in London. He must also be prepared for quite a lot of noise at Abuja House, at his residence, where he's going to be living, uh, with a lot of uh, banging and noise, you know, to let him know that a lot of Nigerians uh, are not pleased with so many things happening back home in Nigeria as well. <laughs> we hope to see his reaction on that. Okay, let's go to some other stories, whether on the social media platform or the others. Over to you. Well, uh, let's look straight away to the social media. It's exactly 11 31 26 of July 2021. What is trending, you know, in Nigeria on Twitter this morning is the case of, you know, Chief Sunday at the Yemo Igbo Wosha, you know, in Kutano and likewise the one happening in Abuja as well. That is trending, you know, and, uh, and uh, we've talked about it. But one thing is, uh, you know, we will be giving, you know, a lot of development, a lot of update from these two cases, you know, between now and tomorrow. Make sure you stay tuned very well. Close glue to Star Radio UK. It is your finest African and Caribbean radio station in London. All right. Then. Listeners, that is Mr. Olayomi Koiki. But as we are on air, once there is any development, you'll be bringing it to you ASAP. So just get your um, glue to your sets and any update from Abu.